let's get into this main event. We've got Sean O'Malley versus Marlon Vera. Uh, the battle of Cheeto versus Takashi 6'8". Marlon Vera, <laughs> dude, he's got low volume, sloppy strike defense when he gets gassed. But at least for Marlon Vera, he rarely gets gassed. Uh, fast strike, switchy, man. Holy hell, this dude's twitchy. He's got great range, wants to stand and bang. It doesn't offer much in the sub game. So that is going to be where Marlon Vera has the advantage. He's got a personal vendetta in this fight. It, he already lost to Cheeto. So I think coming in, um, I don't, he's, de- he got deadly counters too. I think with this vendetta, I think that O'Malley does get it done. This is coming from someone that is not a very big, um, O'Malley fan. I kind of feel like Marab might take it from him here in this next fight. I don't think Cheeto can take it from him. Cheeto's just, he's older. I don't, I don't think he's got that juice to get it from Sean. And Sean also is just, he's just the master of kind of like Marab, just pointing you to death, just winning the rounds and then getting out of there with a decision. He could get a knockout of Cheeto. Let's see what that double method is. Um, and I'll get you guys, some some money splits here on this one too. A lot of money coming in on O'Malley. He's got 83% of the bets, 91% of the money. Holy hell. Um, I don't see the belt switching from O'Malley to Vera to Marab, like within the, the like these two fights. Um, winning method, if you want to take Sean O'Malley, knockout decision. Oh, yuck. It's minus 270 money line. The knockout decision is minus 250. It only knocks off 20. Holy hell. Yeah, it's pretty disgusting. That is disgusting. I'm at plus 1,800. So you basically have to take Sean O'Malley to, by decision or by knockout. God, even decision. Did you see that decision at plus 100? Knockout know, man. at plus 240. Can Cheeto make it? Can Cheeto make it 25 minutes? Uh, no. <laughs> yeah, I'm going to say no, too, because the one big thing, I just think Sean doesn't like Cheeto. Like, I really think that, like, he doesn't like this dude, and he's going to be looking to put him down. So let's go the KO plus 240. Is that where you are, too? Yeah, I actually really like this fight. <clears throat> it's kind of interesting for me because I was a guy who started off when he first came into the UFC. Damn, did I hate Sean O'Malley. Yes. God, I, he was actually honestly one of my top five most hated <laughs> fighters. And just because once again of the career, I just get tired of the guys in the mold of MVP, of Greg Hardy, of Sean O'Malley in the beginning who just get fed these cans for the highlight reel. But it seemed like when they face real competition – they folded. They folded like Superman on laundry day. You know, that's how MVP did. That's how Sean O'Malley did four years ago when he first fought Cheeto. His first real test, he folded like Superman. Greg Hardy, when he first started fighting real fighters and not guys cut from the UFC, brought back on a one-fight deal just to feed them and then cut again, that's how he folded. So I really didn't like him. And I still don't approve of his personal lifestyle choices. I'm not going to get into that because Ian Gary does enough of that bullshit to keep us all entertained. So just fast forward in through all that, keeping us on topic and moving along. I do really approve of his fighting choices, though. And he really impressed me because for all of his gimmicks and all of the crazy antics and things that he does, for example, when he showed up to the press conference today, literally looking like some damn Christmas tinsel, shirtless with like a green Christmas tinsel jacket, like floor length on and some crazy ass sunglasses and white polyester bell bottoms for all the crazy shenanigans, the pink Lambos, the ostentatious bullshit that he does. It clearly works. Number one, because even casuals know who Sean O'Malley is. And he really is a big selling point of this card to the point where guys who have no interest in the UFC are talking about this card and talking about his fight and every other fight on the main card uh, in the gym and shit that I'm working out at uh, last night. So he brings in the audience with this flashiness, like his style itself, as you mentioned, is flashy. He does get knockouts with it, and they are highlight reel knockouts. And granted, once again, before I get to fanboy over him because i'm not a fanboy i do like and respect him more than i did but once again let's be honest and real they are mostly against 
like Chris Motino, the guy who worked in the paint factory a day before he fought him. Like, but it's, it's, it's cool. It's cool to see. And he did still do it against Aljo. He did still do the same thing against Aljo when the time came to show and prove against a real top tier talent and champion caliber fighter who was on a hell of a streak and just tearing up the division like Aljo. He made him look foolish and made him pay for it, made him look silly. And that's hard to do. And another thing that I really liked about him was I watched a video last night while I was working out where he was being interviewed, where he was talking about he purchased this uh, like sprinter van so he could be like chauffeured around so he could use the time he's no longer spending going to and from the gym to work on like uh, visualization, breathing, stretching, using the massage gun, like shit like that. And that sounds a bit hokey. And that sounds a bit woo-woo, but it's really impressive. And I have a lot of respect for a guy who on the outside seems very immature and flashy and careless and like arrogant. But he's clearly taken this shit very serious to the point where he's 20 minutes, he said, to the gym, 20 minutes back from the gym. But he takes it so serious. He wants those 40 minutes not to be spent driving. He wants that to be spent on some type of prep whether that's stretching, using the massage gun, rolling out, breath work, meditation, whatever he feels like he needs to get in that camp mode and that fight mode, he's using that. And so that's very impressive to me. And I have a lot of respect for that. He takes this very serious. You hit a, you hit on a really good point when you say that this is personal. I heard him say today that he legitimately thinks it is personal. He flat out said, this is personal and I legitimately want to hurt Cheeto. And I never really heard him say that about other opponents before. And that can be a good thing and that can be a bad thing. That can be a good thing because he is taking it serious and he does have a chip on his shoulder and he does want to go out there and prove to people that, as he says, it was lucky and it was a fluke that Cheeto got that win over him. But it could also be a bad thing. It could also be a bad thing because you're not supposed to Some people say, and I don't necessarily agree with this myself personally, but a lot of people believe that you shouldn't let your opponent be that much in your head. Even if it's motivational, it's still a bad sign that they're that in your head and you're that obsessed with them. I don't agree, but I know a lot of people see it the opposite. Me personally, I think it is good motivation, and I think it is good to see that you want that back, that you do care that much to get that back, and that you want to rectify that. I don't think it's going to be a negative. I don't think it's going to be something that like holds him back. It's just kind of like Conor McGregor said, like, this is just business. You know, I talk a lot of shit. I say a lot of things, but at the end of the day, it's just to promote the fight. It's just business. It's just at the end, we shake hands, we move on. I think that's how Sean O'Malley is. I don't think he's going to let it carry him away. And I don't think it's going to let him get angry. I think he's keeping his cool and he's calm and he's collected. It's just an extra little motivation. But uh, it, it is tough because Cheeto does have that first round knockout over him. And I know he likes to say, and part of it's trolling, I do believe. But part of it's also like, dude, you really were asleep. I know you said, I know you you're saying you never completely went out. He took an elbow that put him out. He was out at one point completely, and it's always tough because it came from a calf kick setup. And anytime you're in a rematch like this where you got finished, even though it was four years ago, you're the one that has to make the changes. The other guy just has to do the same game plan. He already recognized that. He already capitalized over that. It's on you. Everything's now on you to do something different and to try to get him to react to something different. That always puts more stress. That always puts more pressure on the person who's trying to get their get back. But, yeah, I I think O'Malley gets it done, and I do think he gets it done by KO, TKO. Uh, I really do, especially to offset the disgustingness of the money line. I don't think he goes to decision because it's a five-round fight for 25 minutes. I just think these guys are both going to have bad intentions. I think they're both going to want to – they're both have something to prove. They're both going to want to finish. They're both using this as a real fire in their bellies. Even though Cheeto does have the first win, he still, you can clearly tell, does not like Sean as a fighter, does not like him as a person, still holds a grudge even though he has the W right now and he definitely wants that belt to be the first Ecuadorian champ. But 
I just think Sean's going to be too much. He's way taller. He has better yeah. reach. He has better angles. Jack Slack, once again, shout out, did a perfect video about the open side counter that Sean O'Malley likes to use. He just finds everything he can to get to that open side counter. Like, And that's the beautiful part of his game is that people will criticize it for being a one-trick pony, but that's pure MMA in a nutshell in its perfect, simplest form is what are you good at? How do you amplify that? How do you make it stronger? And how do you take away the other person's strengths and amplify their weaknesses? And Sean just incorporates everything around opening up that open side counter shot. That's how he knocked out Aljo. That's how he's knocked out Eddie Wineland. So many other people on his resume. And I think if he wants it bad enough, he can find it against Cheeto because he constantly switches stances. So Orthodox versus Southpaw. I don't even know off the top of my head what Cheeto normally fights out of, but it's going to be negated by O'Malley constantly stance shifting. He's going to constantly find openings. So whatever Cheeto's doing in his stance, O'Malley's not going to be affected by it. He's as comfortable in Southpaw as he is in Orthodox, and he'll find an opening somewhere. That's what makes him such a sniper, so precise, and he gets it done, I believe. That – counter he had against aljo was elite man i mean like he sat him down w with zero hesitation like he punched through his head he's really good at making because it's a common sense thing in mma that's like one of the first things you're taught like day one in striking classes right it's like the first thing i remember is don't lead with your face right don't just lead with your head don't lead with your face into striking exchanges that's like the number one no, no. Mm -hmm. And that's what Aljo did. Aljo knows that you're not supposed to lead face first into striking exchanges with the taller, rangier sniper striker that he was going up against. Of course he fucking knows he's not supposed to do that. You have but to. Sean is right. You have Sean to that is range. Just, yeah. Sean is just so good at forcing you to, he right. forces you to come to him and to do it, even though you know you shouldn't. And it's just served up on a silver platter. You better start listening to the Better in Green podcast. You will not regret it. Trust me, trust me, trust me. And hey, I'm Dean Blandino. Welcome, welcome, welcome to Better in Green. All about. Come on, let's make cash now. We always on spot and we cover old spot from the bottom to the top. Hey, shout out to Ethan, shout out to Wyatt, shout out to Ben. Welcome, welcome to our podcast. Better win green.